Well, at least it was 30 minutes shorter than last week's episode. That's the only progress we got. I'm Charles Rathlin with my review of AEW Dark because still 17 matches on this episode. Next week, they'll do it under two hours, but with 19 matches. I really shouldn't encourage them. I'm glad they're featuring more talents. They featured five women's matches again and some people that I actually think have a lot of good potential and I hope AEW does sign them down the road. But this is overkill. This is overkill for any company. Unless you're going to spread this out over two shows, there is no reason to have 17 matches on one goddamn show. It's like the three-hour Nitros when they would feature 13 matches and some of them would go a couple minutes. But the difference is, Nitro got some big ratings. This is just a show on YouTube. Enough is enough. Anyway, uh, Taz, Excalibur, and Anthony, don't call me Monster or Gogo, were on commentary. Uh, Anthony left after about halfway through so Ricky Starks could join. KTB versus Sean Spears. I don't care about the Spears versus Scorpio Sky feud, though I like Scorpio Sky. He shows up on the stage with the metal piece that totally tossed to him during uh, Spears and uh, Sky's match on Dynamite. But Sky wouldn't use it, but he apparently kept it, and Spears got the victory. So he's just looking at him, Spears trash-talking him. KTB got in some shots, but eventually the Scorpio, I mean Scorpion Deathlock, got the victory. Though he is Canadian, so I think they should call it the Sharpshooter. And then Sky gets in the ring, stares him down, and then hits the TKO on KTB. Okay? Are we going to get an unlikely tag team? Or are we getting Scorpio saying, hey, I'm going to prove that I'm just as tough as you are and I can be very, very dark-minded? Not really sure. Anyway, Damien Fenrir versus Ricky Starks. Ricky is great. Fenrir has a good look, but this is a little bit awkward. You can tell he has potential, but he's got a long way to go. <laughs> Rochambeau, one, two, three. And Ricky got the victory. Danny Limelight, who I really liked on New Japan Strong Primetime Live, versus Brandon Cutler, who's been on a winning streak. Brandon is fine. Uh, Danny really is a star in the making. Uh, some good arm targeting by Danny. Uh, at one point, he got a rear naked choke, and commentary said he finds the mount. I promise. I reacted to that with a good taste of maturity you come to expect from me, which means you're new to this channel because I'm a very mature, you know, minded individual. Except I'm totally fucking not, because how can I be? He finds the mount. How can I not laugh at that? Anyway, uh, Cutler does do a dive, but uh, Danny reverses it into an arm bar on the mat. And eventually, uh, TPK, which is the name, uh, a lot of letters for, you know, the finishers here. And Brandon Cutler gets another victory. John Cruz versus Pretty Peter Avalon. Okay, good. I don't mind Peter Avalon as a worker. I don't get this fucking Pretty Peter Avalon gimmick. Uh, uh, saggy ass body was a line from Taz about Avalon. Martinis, one, two, three. Cool, whatever. Let's just move on from that. Tesha Price versus Shanna. Hopefully, or Shanna, Shana, I think Shanna. Hopefully she didn't say anything about closing the borders here. Like certain tweets you like from somebody in the French. You know what? I'm just going to move on from that. But let's just say there are some issues going on in France that I've read about. And Shanna may be on the wrong side of it. Anyway, moving on from that. Um, I will say this. Tasha actually has some good potential. And I understand Shanna has been off for a while. There was a very awkward um, dropkick spot where she just landed right on her goddamn face. That was really, really bad. Um, Te Tesha did have a nice mean streak. Uh, Tiger suplex, one, two, three. And Marvez is uh, ignored by Scorpio Sky backstage. And then Catalina Perez versus Kylan King. I love Kylan King. I hope she gets signed by the company. If she hasn't been signed already, maybe she has. They sign a lot of people, so I'm not sure. But she should be signed. She has a wealth of potential. Got a long way to go. But she's got good size, got good ability. Catalina Perez, I heard a lot about. Um, I, I need to see more of her. Don't quite get it, but I haven't seen enough of her work. But she, you know, has a different look. And her and Kyla, it, it was an okay match. It wasn't great, but it was okay. Um, big drop kick off the roast, and then we get the kingdom. The flat, you know, the, the flat name. One, two, three. I'm not really sure what the fuck to call it. It's like just a front buster. And then we get uh, Adam Priest and Shamaluda versus the best friends with Orange Cassidy. I cannot stand the best friends anymore. I've just, I've had it. I've had it with him. Trent's a good athlete. I fucking hate the team. Hate the team. Can't stand Orange Cassidy. I've hated all the feuds they've been involved in. Even though the parking lot brawl with Santana and Ortiz was good, <clears throat> the lead up for the feud was dog shit. And now they're fighting with Miro and Kip over a broken arcade machine that was, that was just hollowed out. And even if it wasn't, wasn't even fucking plugged in. This is stupid. This is stupid shit. Anyway, two pile drivers pins Priest. Ricky then joins commentary. Alex Gracia versus Leva Bates with the Bucks book because we need to promote the fact that the Young Bucks are killing the business. I mean, that's the name of their book. Look, 
The Bucks have their fans. They've done incredible on their merch, and they have their fans. Guess what? I don't fucking care. I don't think the Young Bucks are even close to being the wor uh, the best tag team in the world. They are not the worst tag team by far. They are not. They ha they do have some good matches in them. I just don't think they've had that many great matches in them because they're not my style. Uh, the Pink Dream versus the Librarian. I saw that in the movie once. And moving on, wasn't bad. A uh, nice bridge by Leva. Alex does have some unique offense. At one point, doing a bridge with a you know, a double arm, that was pretty cool. And Leva gets the win soon after. Wasn't bad. And then they both promote the Bucks book, which apparently is out. I would not I would not read that book if somebody sent it to me. I'm just saying that right now because I don't care for, about the Young Bucks. And then we get Angel Fashion, VSK, and Sean uh, Donovan versus the Gun Club. The guns mock ta Taz with the towels on their heads. And eh, this is the point where I stopped caring. It's nothing against any of these guys. This show was going too damn long. We were only an hour in. Uh, quick draw pins VSK. And then, uh, man, they they talked about the little bit of the bubbly and then the Bucks book, a lot of advertisements. I think it was like at least five each. If they cut those down. Well, I mean, they got to get they got to get the word out, but it's just they cut a few of those out. We could have saved a couple minutes. Anyway, Aaron Solo versus Matt Seidel. Nice wrestling. Uh, commentary not caring. Through a lot of this really bothered me. Not this match specifically. The fact that they were assing off a whole lot. If they don't care, why should I? There's one thing about having fun. You can have fun during stuff like this. Because, yes, you should, you know, kind of, you know, have a little bit of fun and, e and ease off on seriousness during a show like this. But if you're not going to make me care about these talents, then why in the world are we watching this? So, um, we get a clutch and then out and then a twist and plant. I don't know what the fuck to call that move from side out. One, two, three. Uh, Solo did hit a nice stomp earlier. Uh, Baron Black and Fuego Del Sol versus Uno and Grayson of the Dark Order. Yay, hey, I can't get the fuck away from the goddamn motherfucking Dark Order. And that they're good athletes. I don't like the gimmick. I hope Brody Lee recovers from whatever injury he has. Uh, Flatliner, Pin, Soul, 1, 2, 3, cool, whatever. Cesar Benoni and Ryzen versus Garrison, Griff Garrison, that is. And Brian Pillman Jr. is fine. Blockbuster, Spinebuster combo, Ryzen gets pinned. <laughs> Lindsay Snow versus Eva Lee. This victory by Ivelisse was all in her head. Uh, how is she not that good after being in wrestling for like 15 years? Seriously, how? I mean, I'm not saying I can get in the ring and do this stuff, but what the fuck? She's not that good. Lindsay Snow is actually pretty good. Has a lot of tattoos. Love the look. Um, and Taz and Excalibur argue about the tattoo difference between Lindsay Snow and Taz. Cool. Whatever. That's what I want to hear from my commentary team. And then it was like some front kick, one, two, three. George South Jr., wow, that is how long wrestling's been going on. That George South Jr. looks a lot like his dad, by the way. Um, and Bobby Wayward uh, versus the acclaimed Bowens and Caster. And let me just say this right now. Bobby Wayward has a good look, and he will get better. There were some awkward spots in this where I'm like, ooh. The acclaimed are good, though. And... Uh, Claim to fame, diving elbow, one, two, three. And then we get, I took a break to watch Primetime Live, by the way, the last episode for 2020 and maybe the last episode for the next few months. Uh, Alex Chamberlain and Seth uh, Gargas versus Chaos Project. Serpentico and Luther. Serpentico, I don't mind. Gargas has some good size. Chamberlain, it, he's fine. What? Why is Luther there? Why? He fucking sucks. All the screaming. He can't do anything. He's beating up his own tag partner, headbutting him into um, Chamberlain's gut, and then throwing him. Because Luther can't do anything, because he can't take any fucking bumps, because he sucks. Anyway, um, what the fuck was it? What, double knees off the top, one, two, three, cool, whatever. Serpentico at least got the pin. I hope he got the pin. Um, Lady Frost versus Red Velvet. I like both their looks, seriously. I think Lady Frost has got a cool look. Red Velvet I've been impressed with pretty much since the first time I saw her. Wish they wouldn't align her with Brandy, because Brandy is basically death as far as creative. But... Wasn't bad. Good strikes. They, you know, put in some good effort here and pump kick. One, two, three. Red Velvet got the victory. Hopefully Lady Frost gets invited back. Five and ten Angels and Vance of the Dark Order. I don't fucking care about them. <coughs> versus Sunny and Janela versus Jurassic Express with the midget there. Let me say right now, if they do introduce Trios Championships, give Jungle Boy and Luchasaurus a different tag partner. There is no wrestling world that is good if Marco Stunt is going to be holding a championship. Marco Stunt should never even be in a goddamn ring. Just, you might as well toss the championships in the goddamn trash if you give Marco Stunt a championship. Just saying. 
if I'm going to knock WWE for the 24-7 championship and a whole bunch of stuff, I'm going to knock the fact that they ever give it to Marco Stunt. And if they do, if they create those championships and they're the first title, you better damn well believe I'm going to rant about that. Because I'm sticking to my guns on this goddamn thing. I will dig my heels in the goddamn ground on this. But I like Luchasaurus and Jungle Boy. I did not care for this match. Janela is fucking goddamn rot. Why is he still there? He's so fucking terrible. Sonny Kiss at least is a good athlete. Wrestler, he's still got a while to go. But at least he's got potential and he, hits, he hit a good moonsault later. We got a whole bunch of apron bumps because Janela only knows garbage wrestling. And then some bomb pins Angels, I think. I think Angels took the pin. I don't fucking care. Anyway, I'm crumpling this up because, you know, over two hours for this goddamn thing. Anyway, agree, disagree, what I said, like, share, subscribe, Twitter handle in the description. I'm John Rithlin. I'll see you soon.